My name is Emily, and I have something to confess. It's not easy for me to talk about this, but I feel I need to share it with someone. It all started just over a year ago, when I was 22 and about to finish my psychology degree. I decided to take a vacation with my friends before diving into the working world. We chose a tropical island, a paradise of white sand and turquoise waters that promised to be the perfect setting to relax and have fun. I never imagined those vacations would change my life forever. On the first day on the island, while my friends and I were exploring the beach, I saw him for the first time. He was sitting on the terrace of an elegant beachfront bar, with a book in one hand and a glass of wine in the other. His salt and pepper hair and distinguished bearing immediately caught my attention. Our eyes met for an instant, and I felt an inexplicable connection. That night, my friends insisted on going to a local club. I wasn't very enthusiastic, but I agreed. To my surprise, there he was again. He approached the bar where I was and introduced himself. Robert, he said with a deep and confident voice that made my knees tremble. We started chatting, and I discovered that Robert was 58 years old, divorced, and owned a successful technology company. Despite the age difference, the conversation flowed with amazing naturalness. We talked about books, travel, psychology, and our life experiences. I was fascinated by his intelligence and his way of seeing the world. At the end of the night, Robert invited me to dinner the next day. I hesitated for a moment, aware of the age difference and that I was only on vacation, but something in me pushed me to accept. The dinner was magical. Robert took me to an exclusive restaurant on top of a hill with panoramic views of the island. As we ate, he told me fascinating stories about his travels and career. I felt like I was living in a fairy tale. After dinner, Robert suggested we take a walk on the beach. We walked under the stars, with the sound of the waves as background music. Suddenly, he stopped and looked at me intensely. Emily said, I know there's a big age difference between us, but I feel a connection with you that I can't ignore. Do you feel it too? My heart was pounding. I knew that what I was about to do could be a mistake, but at that moment I didn't care. I stood on my tiptoes and kissed him. It was a passionate kiss, charged with pent-up desire. When we separated, we both knew there was no turning back. The following days were a whirlwind of emotions and sensations. Robert and I spent every free moment together. He took me to places on the island that tourists didn't know about, taught me to scuba dive, introduced me to exotic flavors I had never tasted before. Every experience was new and exciting. My friends were worried. They warned me about the dangers of getting involved with an older man, reminding me that we were only on vacation and that we would soon have to return to reality. But I didn't want to listen. I was completely captivated by Robert and the way he made me feel. One night, after a romantic dinner, Robert took me to his suite at the most luxurious hotel on the island. There, for the first time, we made love. It was an experience I'll never forget. Robert was tender and passionate at the same time, making me feel things I had never felt before. I realized what it meant to be with a mature and experienced man. The days passed and our relationship grew more intense. Robert treated me like a queen, made me feel special and valued. He told me about his successes and failures, about his failed marriage, and how he had learned from his mistakes. I talked to him about my dreams and fears, my aspirations and doubts about the future. But as the end of the vacation approached, a shadow of unease began to grow inside me. What would happen when we had to return to our normal lives? Robert lived in a different city, had an established life. I was about to start my career. I had a whole life ahead of me. The night before my departure, I decided to talk to Robert. With tears in my eyes, I told him that I thought it was best to end our relationship, that although what we had lived was beautiful, it had no future. Robert listened to me in silence, with an expression of sadness on his face. When I finished speaking, he took my hands in his and looked into my eyes. Emily, he said softly, from the first moment I saw you, I knew you were special. These days with you have been the happiest I've had in a long time. But I also know that you're right. You're young. You have your whole life ahead of you. I can't ask you to sacrifice it for me. His words surprised me. I expected him to try to convince me to continue, to offer to come with me, or ask me to stay. 
but instead he was letting me go. You deserve to live your life fully. Robert continued to experience, grow, make mistakes, and learn from them. I've already lived all that. What we had was beautiful, but I don't want to be an obstacle in your path. Someday you'll find someone your age with whom you can build a life together. And when that happens, I hope you'll remember this summer fondly, as I will. That night, we made love for the last time. It was a bittersweet experience, full of passion and sadness at the same time. The next morning, Robert accompanied me to the airport. We said goodbye with one last kiss and the promise to keep in touch. The first months after returning were difficult. I immersed myself in my studies and job hunting, trying not to think about Robert. But at night, when I was alone in my room, I couldn't help but remember our moments together. Robert and I exchanged some messages at first, but gradually the communication became less frequent. I understood that it was for the best. I needed to move on with my life. A year has passed since that summer on the island. Sometimes, when I close my eyes, I can still feel the sea breeze and hear Robert's laugh. But it doesn't hurt like before. I've learned to appreciate that experience for what was a beautiful parenthesis in my life. A lesson about love and maturity. Now, at 23, I feel more confident in myself. The experience with Robert taught me a lot about what I want and don't want in a relationship. It showed me that love can come in unexpected ways, and that sometimes, loving also means letting go. I've had some dates since then, but none have been as special as what I experienced with Robert. However, I haven't lost hope. I know that someday I'll find someone with whom I can build a lasting relationship. Someone who makes me feel as special as Robert did, but who also shares my dreams and vision for the future. Meanwhile, I focus on my career and enjoying my youth. I go out with my friends, travel when I can, and try to live each day to the fullest, and when I think of Robert, I do so with a grateful smile. Sometimes I wonder what he's doing now. Does he think of me as I think of him? Has he found someone else? Part of me hopes he has, that he's found the happiness he deserves. Another part, a selfish part, that I try to silence, wishes that he remembers me as his great summer love. Recently, while tidying my room, I found a shell I had collected on the island's beach. I hold it in my hands and close my eyes, allowing myself for a moment to relive those days. The heat of the sun on my skin, the softness of the sand under my feet, the intensity of Robert's kisses. For an instant, I'm back in that tropical paradise, young and innocent, about to live the most exciting adventure of my life. But then I open my eyes and return to the present. I place the shell on my bedside table, a constant reminder that love can come at the most unexpected moments and in the most unexpected forms. A reminder that sometimes the best experiences in life are those we don't plan. Now, as I write these words, I realize how much I've grown since that summer. I'm no longer the same naive girl who fell hopelessly in love with an older man on a paradise island. I'm a stronger woman, wiser, with a better understanding of myself and what I want in life. Robert taught me that true love isn't just about passion and romance. It's about respect, understanding, knowing when to let go. He taught me that sometimes people enter our lives for a limited time, but leave a permanent mark. I often wonder if I'll ever see Robert again. I fantasize about running into him by chance on the street or on another trip. I imagine what that encounter would be like. Would we feel the same spark? Or would we realize that what we had was beautiful precisely because it was ephemeral? But deep down, I know it's unlikely we'll ever see each other again. And maybe it's better that way. I prefer to keep the perfect memory of our summer love without the complications and challenges that would inevitably arise if we tried to resume it. Instead, I carry with me the lessons I learned, the confidence Robert helped me build, the passion he awakened in me, the emotional maturity I gained. All of that has made me a better version of myself. Now, when I date someone, I don't settle for less. I look for someone who respects me, as Robert did who challenges me intellectually, who makes me feel valued and desired. But I also look for someone with whom I can grow together, with whom I can build a future. 
Sometimes my friends ask me about that older man I dated on vacation. I smile mysteriously and tell them it was an unforgettable experience. I don't go into details. I prefer to keep those intimate moments just for myself. But I do tell them that relationship taught me a lot about love and about myself. My parents never knew about Robert. I decided to keep it a secret, knowing they wouldn't understand. Sometimes I feel guilty for hiding such an important part of my life from them. But then I remember that some experiences are so personal that it's better to keep them private. In my therapy sessions, yes, psychologists go to therapy too, I've talked about Robert and how that relationship affected me. My therapist has helped me process the experience, understand why I felt so attracted to an older man and how that has influenced my subsequent relationships. I've learned that there's nothing to be ashamed of. It was a consensual relationship between two adults. Although the age difference was significant, we were both mature enough to make our own decisions. And in the end, Robert demonstrated his integrity by letting me go, by understanding that I needed to live my own life. Sometimes, I wonder what would have happened if the circumstances had been different. If Robert had been younger or I older. If we had lived in the same city, would we have had a real chance to build something lasting? But then, I remind myself that there's no point in living in the what-if. What matters is what actually happened, and how it has helped me grow. Recently, I started working at a psychology clinic. It's a challenging but rewarding job. Often, when I listen to my patients talk about their relationships, about lost loves and broken hearts, I can't help but think of Robert. I realize how much that experience has helped me better understand the complexities of the human heart. Sometimes when I'm advising a young patient about a complicated relationship, I have to bite my tongue to keep from telling her about my own experience. Instead, I try to convey the lessons I learned in a more professional manner. The other day, a patient told me about a summer love she had and how she couldn't get over it. As I listened to her, I felt a deep empathy. I knew exactly how she felt. I talked to her about how sometimes the most intense loves are those that last a short time, but that doesn't make them any less valuable. I explained how each relationship, regardless of its duration, teaches us something about ourselves and about what we want in life. After that session, I found myself thinking about Robert again. I wondered if he would have had the same impact on my life if our relationship had lasted longer. Would it have lost its shine if we had dragged it beyond that perfect summer? Perhaps the magic was precisely in its brevity, in the intensity of knowing we had a limited time together. Sometimes when I'm at the beach, although none compare to that tropical island, I close my eyes, and for a moment I can feel Robert's hands on my waist, his breath on my neck. The memory is so vivid that I can almost smell his cologne, a mix of citrus and wood that drove me crazy. But then I open my eyes and return to the present. The reality is that I'm no longer the same girl who fell hopelessly in love on that island. I'm a growing woman with my own dreams and ambitions. And although part of me will always treasure what I experienced with Robert, I know my future lies ahead, not in the past. A few weeks ago, I met someone. His name is Jason, and he's a colleague at the clinic where I work. He's 28, intelligent, fun, and we share many interests. We've gone out a couple of times, and although it's too early to say where this will lead, I feel a connection with him that I hadn't felt since Robert. The curious thing is that, in a way, Robert prepared me for this new relationship. Thanks to him, I know what I'm looking for in a partner. I know I deserve someone who respects me, who values me for who I am, who challenges me intellectually. And Jason seems to fulfill all of that. But there are also important differences. With Jason, I don't feel the urgency and intensity that I felt with Robert. Instead, there's a comforting warmth, a sense of companionship that's building slowly. I realize that this is what I need now, a relationship that can grow over time, not a burning love that consumes quickly. However, I can't help but compare sometimes. When Jason kisses me, a small part of me remembers Robert's kisses and wonders if I'll ever feel that overwhelming passion again. But then I remind myself that each relationship is unique and that it's not fair to compare. The other day, Jason and I were watching a movie in my apartment. It was a love story between two people with a big age difference. I couldn't help but tense up a bit, 
memories of Robert flooded my mind. Jason noticed my discomfort and asked if everything was okay. For a moment, I considered telling him about Robert, but I decided it wasn't the right time yet. Someday, when our relationship is stronger, I'll tell him about that experience that marked me so much. For now, I prefer to focus on building something new with him. Sometimes, I wonder if I'm being fair to Jason by keeping this secret. Should I tell him about Robert? How would he react if he knew I had an intense relationship with a much older man? These questions run through my head. But for now, I've decided that some experiences are so personal that they don't need to be shared, at least not until the relationship reaches a deeper level of trust and mutual understanding. Meanwhile, I continue with my life. My career as a psychologist is taking off. I'm considering starting a postgraduate degree next year. My friends and family are proud of me. They see how I've matured and grown. If only they knew how much of that growth I owe to those weeks on the island with Robert. Sometimes, in my moments of weakness, I search for Robert on social media. I never find him, which doesn't surprise me. He was never very fond of technology, preferring books and face-to-face -face conversations. Part of me is glad not to find him. This way I can maintain the perfect memory I have of him, without the complications of reality. The other day, while organizing my closet, I found the dress I was wearing the night I met Robert. For a moment, I considered trying it on, but then decided not to. That dress belongs to Robert. It belongs to another era. To another Emily. The woman I am now no longer fits in it, neither physically nor metaphorically. Instead, I carefully folded it and put it away in a box, along with other memories from that summer. The seashell from the beach. A hotel brochure. A postcard I never sent. It's my little time capsule, a tangible reminder that it was all real, not just a vivid dream product of my imagination. Sometimes, I wonder if I'll ever tell my children about Robert. Will I tell them how their mother once lived a passionate adventure with an old man on a tropical island? Probably not. There are experiences that are just ours, that shape us and define us, but that don't need to be shared with the world. As I write these words, I realize that I no longer think about Robert every day, like I used to. His memory no longer causes a sharp pain in my chest, but a soft nostalgia, a warmth that makes me smile. I've accepted that what we had was beautiful precisely because it was ephemeral, like a shooting star that illuminates the sky for an instant and then disappears, leaving us amazed and grateful for having witnessed its beauty. Now, when I think about love, I no longer seek that overwhelming intensity that I felt with Robert. Instead, I long for something more sustainable, a connection that can grow and deepen over time. I want a life partner, someone with whom I can build a future, not just live a passionate moment. And perhaps that's the most important lesson that Robert taught me without knowing it. He showed me what it's like to feel intense passion, but he also made me realize that true love is much more than that. It's companionship, it's mutual respect, it's growing together. As I look to the future, I feel excited about the possibilities that await me. Maybe Jason is the right one. Maybe not. Perhaps I still have many experiences to live before I find my life partner. But whatever destiny has in store for me, I know I'll be prepared to face it. Robert will always be an important part of my story, the chapter that marked the end of my innocence and the beginning of my emotional maturity. But he's no longer the protagonist of my story. That role belongs to me. Now every time I see the sea, I no longer automatically think of Robert and that island. Instead, I think of all the possibilities that stretch out before me, as vast and infinite as the ocean itself. And I smile, grateful for everything I've lived, and excited for everything that's yet to come. As the sun sets on the horizon, painting the sky in shades of pink and orange, I allow myself one last thought about Robert. I silently thank him for the experience we shared, for the lessons he taught me, for helping me become the woman I am today. And then, gently, I let him go. The future awaits me, full of promises and possibilities. And I'm ready to write the next chapters of my life with the wisdom I gained in that unforgettable summer as my silent guide. I look ahead with hope and determination, knowing that the best is yet to come. Because although Robert taught me what passionate love is, I know there are many other forms of love to discover, and I'm eager to experience them all.
As I walk along the beach with the sea breeze caressing my face, I realize that I no longer look for Robert in every man I meet. I no longer compare every kiss, every caress with his. I've learned to appreciate each experience for what it is, unique and incomparable. Jason sends me a message asking if I want to have dinner with him tonight. I smile and reply yes. As I prepare for the date, I realize that I'm excited, but in a different way than I was with Robert. There are no frantic nerves, no excessive expectations, just a warm anticipation of spending time with someone who makes me feel valued and respected. Before leaving, I take one last look at the box where I keep my memories of that summer. For a moment, I consider opening it, but then decide it's not necessary. Those memories will always be there, but I no longer need to cling to them. I'm ready to create new memories, to live new experiences. As I close the door of my apartment, I feel as if I'm also closing a chapter of my life. The chapter of Emily and Robert. The summer love that changed me forever. But it's not a sad ending. It's the beginning of something new. Something exciting. I walk towards a restaurant where Jason is waiting for me with an open heart and a clear mind. I'm no longer the girl who fell hopelessly in love on a tropical island. I'm a strong, confident woman, ready to love again, but this time with my eyes wide open. And as I enter the restaurant and see Jason smile at me from our table, I feel a wave of gratitude. Gratitude for Robert and what we lived. Gratitude for the lessons learned. And gratitude for this new opportunity that presents itself before me. Because in the end, that's what life is. A series of chapters, some short and intense, others long and calm. And each one of them shapes us, molds us, prepares us for the next. So here I am, ready to write the next chapter of my story. And although I don't know exactly what the future holds for me, I know I'll be fine. Because I carry with me the lessons of the past and the hope of the future. And that, dear reader, is more than enough.